Hi, welcome. We are lawyers from Lawyers Collective and today we are here to discuss the proceedings that took place in the Supreme Court on the Hadia case on 27th November 2017. In the Supreme Court, uh, the Supreme Court had asked Hadia to come to the Supreme Court on 27th November and they wanted to speak to her. But what happened in the courtroom was very different than them just talking to her because they initially took two hours to decide if they even wanted to speak to Hadia. To give a little context of what this case is about, uh, Hadia is a 25-year-old woman who was remanded in the custody of her parents by Kerala High Court uh, in 2016 and she has been staying with her parents in, under their custody, forcefully under their custody for the last 11 months. The Kerala High Court asked to do so because she had married a Muslim guy uh, called Shafin Jahan and she had converted to, the, to, the, uh, to Islam. Uh, but the Kerala High Court felt that uh, that this was done. Hadia's uh, father uh, had filed a petition in the Kerala High Court alleging that uh, she had not she had uh, she was being going she was going to be taken out of the country by her husband, and that she had not uh, converted to Islam uh, by her own free will, and the High Court agreed to that, and he's and they said that the decisional autonomy of a major is also not fully binding on the parents. The parents can take decisions for them on their behalf. So the husband of Hadia, Shafin Jahan, had come to the Supreme Court saying that this is not correct and he needs, and the marriage should not have been annulled by the Kerala High Court. The, the context aside, what happened in the Supreme Court was very disturbing, where there were lawyers on both the sides, uh, lawyers representing Shafin Jahan, Hadia's husband, and lawyers representing uh, the National Investigative Agency and both sides alleging different things and on different pages where the lawyers from uh, the National Investigation Agency and Hadia's father were saying that uh, they have uncovered a very well-oiled machinery that is operating in, Kerala's, uh, in Kerala and they are converting a lot of uh, women forcefully and how uh, Hadiya's husband allegedly had connections with ISIS or, the, or other terrorist organizations and they had full records of that. And they wanted those records to be looked into by the judges, by the three judge bench, before they actually spoke to Hadiya. Whereas the lawyers who were representing Hadiya's husband, seeking Hadiya's freedom uh, were uh, Mr. Sibyl and Ms. Jessing. What they were alleging were that, no, primarily this is an issue about Hadiya's personal autonomy and personal freedom and the connections of Shafin Jahan or the investigations that are being taken place should be delinked. Both these issues should not be connected as one and be explored as one. They should first look into what happens to the autonomy of a 25-year-old adult woman and how she has been forcefully put in the custody of her parents. It took the judges over two hours to decide if Hadiya if they should even speak to Hadia, when they had asked Hadia in a previous order to come to the court and they wanted to speak to her. The lawyers of the National Investigative Agency and Hadia's uh, father, Mr. Sham Divan and uh, the ASG, Mr. Maninder Singh, they were saying Hadia has been indoctrinated, she has been programmed, she has been brainwashed and that is why she has been coerced to convert to Islam. And such cases have also been found before. And the, 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 the debate just kept on getting prolonged and prolonged to talk about that is the primary issue that Hadia's personal freedom as an adult, should that be respected by the Supreme Court of India or her personal choices for that matter or should they first decide conclusively if Shafin Jahan has terrorist links or if he is a threat or and in that regard Consequently, Hadiya is a threat to national security. So these two issues were very interlinked when they should have been not. I think they were just confused as one and there was much more to the issue than they were making it out to be. Don't you think so? You know, I absolutely agree with you because I think that, you know, in my opinion, I don't think the Supreme Court should have entertained this petition after a certain point of time because I think in the first order or prior to the first hearing in the Supreme Court, even the, chief, the bench uh, concluded that a the person has the freedom of religion and choice. And that is, I think, in the, as Ms. Jessing also uh, points out in the subsequent hearing, that Article 21 is non-negotiable. And I don't think that a 
words being used like programming deprogramming indoctrination these words like programming is not defined anywhere not in the constitution not in any uh, other statute so why are they why are they exploring into an issue which is obviously being forced upon a very simple open and shut case which is that a woman or a, a major woman has decided to choose uh, willingly even if it's a forced conversion and we let's just assume that she was forced into this conversion into this marriage so then what what is this favorable order that they're looking for is the nia and uh, um hadia's uh, fathers uh, lawyers what are they seeking are they seeking that okay is is the is the prime focus of this case to identify that there is a racket going on is that but that's not in the press so what is what is it that a why is it that a 25 year old decisional autonomy is being discussed at the doorsteps of the con- uh, of the supreme court of india and they're entertaining this it's very interesting to see how the supreme court itself has seen hadia uh from discussing who should be given a custody uh, of a 25 year old uh, is is very surprising and uh, uh, going back to the earlier orders of the supreme court um, i think it's uh, it the order of uh, the supreme court in two th- uh, in august 2017 the supreme court actually refers to her as a child in question whereas if you see how in the last hearing justice chandrachud took a very different uh, and a progressive view and he said that uh, women are not chattel and this was in the context when uh, when uh, hadia repeatedly asked uh, the court that her husband should be appointed as her uh, her should be appointed as her guardian and uh, this uh, the view of justice chandrachud actually endorses uh, the fact that women have agency they have uh, they can take their own decisions and definitely it's not about a women versus a man's issue it's it's about taking individual choices and respecting that and um, um, she is a 25 year old she's not a minor she's not a lunatic and um, therefore uh, uh, one needs to question why should her custody be given to anyone else why did kerala high court actually decide that they have no jurisdiction exactly right? exactly also uh, there there are so it is it is complicated at various levels first is would the reaction from everybody be it the court be it the media the public would the reaction be same if this woman had decided to convert into say some other religion maybe she decided to marry a man who followed buddhism or or, or some some other religion other than islam would the reactions be the same secondly would it be the same if if a man decides to change religion and fall in love with a woman and change religion for that so it it is it is it, it has a communal angle to it it has a it has a gender angle to it and and leaving all that aside if the if the court is saying that um, i think in the last hearing the court the court was taking a very um, not a very clear stand on what they what they think hadia to be whether whether they in their head they are thinking that uh, she should be uh, the shafin jahan and hadia should be seen as a man and a woman because the order says uh, once you are telling uh, this uh, 25 year old woman that okay um, in the kerala high court order uh, like how can you decide against the choice of your um, family which is telling her that your marriage at so many levels is wrong then and when she approaches the court supreme court and she asks that you know i i want to pursue my education and she says that uh, and the court decides that okay the state is going to pay for your education so at one point you are looking into this woman because you think that her husband has some links with the terrorist organizations her hus- and that is why this woman has been put into question because of her husband at the same time when she is asking that my husband is going to pay for my education you are telling no the state is going to pay for your education do you even look them as a married couple you don't look them as a married couple she showed some immense courage when she actually um, when the court asked uh, when the when justice uh, chief, chief, chief justice actually asked uh, hadia that okay when the order when he was dictating the order and he said that uh, the the state of kerala will pay for her and she actually questioned that what is the need Yeah, for the for the, yeah, like, for the for the for uh, the Kerala state to pay for her. Uh, and the issue education. of gender justice was actually brought up in the court by Miss Jaising, and it was, it was very shocking for me at that point that the entire courtroom actually burst out laughing 
so it was just that she got up and said that uh, that you are not letting this woman speak for 2 hours and it is about the agency of a woman and if it was a man you would have actually let him speak by now and the courtroom burst out laughing and then the chief justice also got very angry and he said he said no this is very unfair on your part miss jaising this is not about uh, gender justice and then justice chandrachud said that you know miss jaising we would uh, treat man and woman at par it is not about uh, man or woman personal liberty of both would be treated at par but the shocking point for me was that actually the, this is a courtroom full of lawyers and all of them literally quite literally laughed at her for thinking it is a gender justice issue in the first place how is it not if it is about a woman who married by her choice she's been standing there for 2 hours trying to just make her voice heard and what i could think was that here i am this woman is my age and i have to only fight with my parents and this woman has to fight with the entire supreme court of india and even then they actually just they actually tell her what she can do next yes no more she's no more in the custody of her parents but she's been told you can finish you have the permission to finish she your house surgery the the freedom to go pursue her education they had to take it away from her but there is no freedom and to go and visit her friends they, yes. she asked she said can i go visit a friend before that the also problematic part was that what i mean i think that what i heard someone else saying and i kind of agree with them also how it was assumed that a woman who has agreed to marry someone by her choice or convert to religion also the kerala high court pointed that at this age people are not really interested in uh, conversion con like converting to religion like different religion or in all of these philosophies and they like how easy is it for a bench or for lawyers to assume that she is indoctrinated how easy is it for them to assume that oh because she did it by her own choice or she married someone of her own choice she must have been indoctrinated how can she just have that much of a uh mindfulness to do it or by her own free will so don't you think that there's a bigger issue here it's not just about how we can go on and but it's just a distraction from the real issue her decisional autonomy is being discussed but actually it's about a bigger picture how there is a state control and she as i think uh, and ajita pointed out that kerala high court only has jurisdiction over lunatics and minors then and she's neither then why are we taking decisions about her uh, autonomy the issue is much deeper that it is it's as uh, anshit pointed it's about of that particular religion it it has communal it has it has caste based politics and c considering the current political environment it's all mixed into one bag as to what are they what is the agenda here what is the question why uh, article 21 is now out in the open being discussed again and again for a girl which which appears on the on the face of it appears to be a very simple case So the National Investigation Agency was it was there any need for them to be involved in this in this case? In the National Investigation Agency coming into picture because you think that her husband has links, then I might as well just go probe into the husband. Exactly, not, that's not a separate, separate issue, yeah. separate. Se yeah. Also arrest now, him, arrest yeah. her if that's the if that's if, if, if she if she if you think if you have sufficient proof. What crime has she committed? Is the question. Like yeah. She yeah. married by her also, own choice. Also, uh, she married her own choice. She explored her own uh, identity, uh, identity or religion exactly. that she wants to be. Yeah. Also. now i think supreme court has the opportunity to settle it down once and for all like pen it down that a woman has the right to decide who to marry and not the silver lining that we hope that it would actually come on record it's, that it's not a woman can marry on her uh, with her choice and that uh, in 2007 and she won't be supreme thought of as a lunatic or an indoctrinated yes. person and she can pursue her education and she can if she wants if she wants <laughs> and uh, the state will pay for it if you take it to the supreme court this is <laughs> this is just there have been so many cases of honor killing and the supreme court has not shied away from you know giving their opinions as to how it is bad but you don't understand honor killings happen because a person decides to marry like basically it that is the root cause i decide to marry somebody of my choice that is the that is the way the honor is supposedly gone now you have the chance to say directly opposite to it that you know you can you can marry sub, any one of your choice and your honor is going nowhere your rights are intact hadi has been used as a poster girl for love jihad yes. and it is not an issue of love jihad love jihad has not been defined i think in a um, kerala high court in another order has actually said that please don't use words like love jihad and and they've also said that please be careful don't give communal color to things which are just like about simple exercising of your own uh, personal freedom because it is it is political on the face of it but politics is not discussed in the supreme court so yes <laughs> i i think we all agree that overall this was uh, i think in the case of hadia it's 
it's very surprising and shocking to I think all the women in the country that this is a gender issue. We have to identify it as one and treat it as one. Thank you for tuning in. We're all lawyers at Lawyers Collective. I'm Nehmat, Anchal, Ajita, and Shivangi, and we hope to have such discussions more often. Thank you.